Oh, where to begin? I got like four or five hours of sleep last night. Doesn't matter, I'm extremely tired and today is such a busy day, which kind of sucks. I just spent the, well, I worked out this morning, then I spent the last three hours in class. I am eating a very quick lunch right now. The steam is coming into my face and it smells good. And then I have to go back to class and then I have to record a podcast and then I have to teach yoga and then I can go to bed. Uh, even though that is all tiring news, I have some very great news. My teacher decided to give this to me today. It's a vegan nacho cheese, gluten-free. It's called Honest Stand, made of organic potatoes, cashews, carrots, chilies, tomatoes, good things. I'm not a big, like, vegan cheese person, but I thought I should try it. Weird. I guess it's pretty nacho cheesy. It tastes almost like healthy vegan cheese. Yeah, that's my review. It tastes like healthy nacho vegan cheese. Like I'm sure you could find vegan cheese that tastes like, whoa, that's just like nacho cheese, but it's probably filled with a bunch of crap and this is actually pretty clean. Thank you, Darren. It is incredibly glorious out right now and I have to go spend the next few hours in a computer lab dungeon. I'm so over this. This weekend's gonna be fun though. I'm going to Boulder tomorrow, but today is, is so much work. Don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining like a baby because I have to work a lot. I love working. Working is my favorite thing to do. But the key is I like to work on things that excite me, things I like to work on. The things that I have to work on today, minus teaching yoga, are things that I don't really want to do. If it was editing, drawing, making Facebook events, whatever, I'd love to do that all day. Uh, can you write down that FIPS? 3022. FIPS. <laughs> Dude, that's like some, some like, uh, Matrix shit you just did. Very Matrix shit. High, high level of matrix shit. Three zero two two. Oh, okay, go. say hello to the video blog. <laughs> that's Jess. She's helping us. <laughs> what? No, oh, that's three zero two one. Yeah, no worries. Perfect. All right, write them down. Seventy nine point two. Write them down. Writing it down. And then nineteen. Wait, your arrows coming. Really nice shot. I just made this map. <laughs> Let's see it. Thank you for your help. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Jess. We'll give you Good a special job, shout guys. out. Good job, guys. Special thanks. I don't know. For some reason, every time I go to my boyfriend's, we just like do so many fun things, and there's just like never time for showering, <laughs> which is gross. Well, and well, that's why you're on a podcast. Yeah. Oh, but I guess you actually are on video now too. <laughs> Great. My bad. All right, Gabby and I are about to uh, throw down a podcast episode. She just wrote a 125 page thesis called like something something harmful animal agriculture something like that <laughs> yeah so this episode will probably be up on monday making immediate methane reductions means you'll see immediate warming reductions um and but co2 is different co2 is different so co2 isn't as potent as methane um, but it is the primary greenhouse gas in the atmosphere so i think it's you can't really like pri well i mean right now you could prioritize one over the other but i think it's important for us to use methane as like a tool for right now for this immediate warming reductions mm. well i can't be cynical because yeah. once you leave optimism it's like what are you even doing yeah and you're, you're just too much of like a hard worker and just like cool positive person to just <laughs> be like no it's over i'm done no well and so the other thing is um i actually went to cop 21 the paris agreement in paris in mm -hmm. december we skyped from there twice yeah that's right <laughs> only three out of the 195 countries that met even mentioned livestock in their climate action plans. what were those countries um, I believe one was Indonesia, Brazil, and oh gosh, it was like Nigeria maybe. Okay, at least big countries, not like tiny random countries that don't right. have a lot of power. Those are powerful countries. Yeah, and that I'm excited. Really to awesome, and I'll put up the episode on Monday. Cool. Um, so it'll be up.
Right away. No, I mean, you have been such an inspiration in like your fight and everything, and I swear to God, it's like the information that you put out is what is why I'm here writing the thesis that I did, so. Unreal. Yeah. It's amazing. Take that. Love you, Gabby. Yeah, love you too. Have a great, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be gone for the next like two weeks, but um, oh, nice. I will be around here. You going home? I'm going to British Columbia oh. to go skiing. <laughs> This week I have been approached or just thanked from a lot of, I guess you could call them students in my life. I think every single person, you, me, we're always a teacher and a student at the same time, which means you're always devoted to your teachers and also your students in life are always devoted to you. And while I'm always learning from mentors, this week, I have really felt like a teacher. It's taken many forms from some of you guys, viewers, sending me the most beautiful messages on Facebook and emails about l lessons that you appreciate that I talk about in my vlogs and how I've helped your life in one way or another to a few freshmen at my school who have approached me after yoga class asking if they can have lunch with me or a cup of tea just to pick my mind. And it's been beautiful. I've always known that I'm a teacher and just have things to share with people. And finally, people are starting to ask and starting to want to use me as a teacher, which is such a blessing and a gift and a responsibility, but it just feels so good. I told you guys, after yoga, I feel like a new happy man. I've learned a lot of lessons in my life, but one of the most profound realizations I have ever had is realizing the transition from being a student to becoming a teacher. Growing up, I always thought there must be this defining moment, this breakthrough where you get something that you're gonna teach. You get it in life, you are fully rounded and saturated with knowledge in that topic. And in reality, you're never fully informed of anything. Being a teacher is a completely gradual transition that one day you just have to stand up and you gotta fake it till you make it, like my yoga teacher when I was getting trained told me. It's exciting to know that you can become a teacher of anything that you set your mind to, but it's also humbling to remember that there's no real experts in life. There's just people that know a lot. Hey, yeah. No, you don't. I do. Are you a prospy? Yeah, I am. How are you? What, what's I've been looking at you all day. No way. I really Why have. You... So this is just cosmic fate and destiny that I was closing down this vlog, talking about you know that transition of becoming a teacher and inviting students into your life. And I met Nikki over here, who <laughs> is a prospective student coming and viewing CC just traveling here and she happened to see me when I should be home eating dinner after teaching yoga class, vlogging and came up and said hi and she's vegan now. Yes. It was great to meet you. It was great. Nice to meet you too. How do I close down the vlogs? Much love, dream extreme. See you guys. <laughs>